my friends. Today I want to show you how to stop your bike from getting a flat tire. Now, I made a video about this before a little while ago. Uh, since I made that last video, the Lord has showed me a few other ways of doing this. It's a lot simpler where you don't need no glue, where you don't need to flip your tires inside out, and at the same time, uh, where you get a couple extra layers of rubber to protect your inner tube instead of just one. Alright, now if you're like me, whenever you get a flat tire, or whenever you dig in the trash and you find old inner tubes, you'll save those inner tubes. At least that's what I do. <laughs> So luckily today, we just happen to have ourselves a few inner tubes. They got holes in them. They don't hold air. Hang on, something fell. I don't know what that was. But we got ourselves some extra inner tubes here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to put these tubes inside your tire on top of your good inner tube. Alright, now all you really need is a couple old inner tubes, obviously a good inner tube that holds air, and a trusty old air pump, and you should be all set. Alright, so first things first here, I'm going to take the tire off this bike. We got our little inner tubes here. See, I, I dig in the bike store's trash. They always throw out popped inner tubes and tubes that have holes in them and stuff. So I saved them, and that way if I ever, you know, if a friend's bike or whatever needs a tire to line, that way at least you got some extra layers of rubber, and you don't get a flat tire on the road. Another thing, always carry a wrench with you, you never know when you'll need it. Alright. take this tire off of here. I'm not going to bother pausing the camera or whatever because I want you to see how long it takes. It only takes you like maybe five, ten minutes tops. It don't even take you that long to do this. And this way this ensures that when you're on the road, you know what I mean, if you're 10, 15 miles down the road, you don't want to be dealing with no flat tires because of these greedy corporate engineers. They know how to design things to where they fail and to where you have to spend money and get something new. Now if you're like me, you like to modify things, basically take matters in your own hands and make sure that they last. All right, They can make these tires a quarter of an inch thicker if they wanted to. As I was saying, the camera cut me off, uh, as I was saying, they can make these tires a quarter of an inch thicker if they wanted to. And they could really design these tires and the tubes themselves to where they never go flat. But uh, once I get the tire off the bike over there, I'm going to show you how thin they make the tires. And these tires are older, so they're better than the tires you buy now. These tires are probably like five, six years old. Even in the last five, six years, things have changed. Uh, make a long story short, I'm not going to talk your rear off. I'm just going to show you how to do this. And if you do this the right way, you probably won't ever get a flat tire again. Your tire will wear out and the stitching will start breaking before you get a flat tire. So I'm going to uh, uh, continue what I was doing and uh, uh, yeah. Alright, now, when I let the air out of this tire, I'm going to show you what I mean about, you know, if they was to make the rubber a quarter of an inch thicker, it'd never go flat. But that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make the tire thicker.
All right. All right, now, if your tire is really tight on the rim, don't use a screwdriver to take your tire off or to put it on, because I popped a lot of tubes doing that. What you do, take the back end of a wrench or something that doesn't have a point, wedge it inside of the tire, and then once it's inside the tire, look, you slide it down the rim very gently. You probably already know this stuff, but in case if you don't, look, just slide it down the rim, and then voila, the tire comes right off the rim like nothing. All right, now here's our tire, and I'm going to show you what I mean here. See how how thin the rubber is? First of all, I want to show you the inner tube. They make the inner tubes paper thin. Actually, it's stuck to the tire. Hang on. I don't normally get that problem where the tube sticks to the tire, but anyway. Wow. I hope they didn't glue this thing in here. Whoever had the bike before I did. Here we go. Alright, first things first. See if they really wanted this stuff to last they would make this rubber maybe not even a quarter of an inch thicker. All right, that would really help a lot while you're on the road. And the tires, the only thing this tire is made out of is like a nylon stitching and it has like a rubber coating over the nylon. That's all the protection. When you're on the road running over glass and stuff, the only thing protecting your inner tube is these little pieces of rubber here and some thin nylon stretching, stitching with rubber coating it so I don't want to pop this tube I gotta be careful with this <laughs> so now I'm going to show you how to make this tire thicker alright now this tube I think this is alright this tube here is a 20 inch and it popped. I got this out of the bike store's trash. They throw out inner tubes all the time. But even though it's popped, the rubber's still good. When this is inside of your tire, that's two extra layers of protection because you got one layer here and then you got the bottom layer. When that's crushed inside your tire, glass and everything has to go through the tire and now it has to go through two extra layers of rubber before it can get to this. All right, so I'm going to cut the stem off of here and even though it's only 20 inch, this is a 24 inch tire, you can still put it in there. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut it in half and I'm going to have to put those tubes over there on top of this, which is fine. I'm going to show you how to do that and yeah. Alright, hopefully I got my knife with me. Here we go. Alright, so what I'm going to do, first things first, cut off the stem. Since this is a 20 inch tube, I'm going to have to cut the tube in half. And then I'll put them on top of it too. It's very easy to cut the stems off. You only got to cut a little bit of it and then you pull it off. And cut a little bit and then yank it off and toss that I guess now here is a whole two extra layers of rubber that's going to be protecting your inner tube now I'm going to cut this right where it popped all right so this is the first one now I'm going to grab the tire now once you do this what you want to do is you want to make sure that 
rubber right here is flat inside your tire. You don't want any kinks and you don't want any bubbles because that could cause your tube to pop when you're on the road. So, you know, just, I hope you can see this clear. Let me move the camera. Um, I'll move the camera on the ground over here somewhere where you can see. Uh, I'll put it right here. Hopefully you can see right there. Okay. Now what you got to do here, you know, just make sure the rubber's flat inside the tire. Make sure it's not bubbling or make sure there's no kinks. Alright, so right now I cut the 20 inch inner tube in half and I have that inside the tire here. Now you want to make sure it's flat, just like that. See how it's in there? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... And I had another inner tube here somewhere. There, alright, there's another 20 inch over there and this is a 20 inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm going to cut the uh, stem off of this one. And I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. Anytime you find old inner tubes, man, save them. Because even if your tires are already lined, one of your friend's bikes might need uh, some extra protection. And, you know, always have a bike. <laughs> I don't care if you got a car or a truck, always keep a bike, man, because a bike is free. And your bike is your horse, man. That's the way I see it. Your bike is your horse. You take care of your horse, your horse will take care of you, and it'll take you wherever you gotta go. For free. You ain't gotta pay for gas. And if you... Ah! Just cut my finger. Don't make that mistake. Like I was saying, you know what I mean? Once you do this, you don't have to pay anything to go anywhere with a bike. Man, I cut my finger good that time. Man, blood, sweat, and tears. But it's all good. Alright, I'm going to finish cutting the stem off of here. I sliced my finger open. Good. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Alright. Now we got our little tube here. Look at my finger. <laughs> oh well. I'll live, Lord willing. All right, now this is what? This is an 18-inch, 18-inch tube. All right, now you move the camera over here. See, this camera is like your eyes and ears. It's like a portal. You need to make sure that you can see what we're doing here. Okay. Now, thing is, is. All right, now since this is only an 18 inch tube, right where I left off, right where this tube right here ends, you wanna put this on top of it and overlap it by like maybe one inch, just like this. If I had 26 inch tubes, you really wouldn't have to do this, but you know, this is just to make sure that the whole tire is protected and to make sure that the whole tire is lined. So, move all these leaves out of the way. Alright. And then you just basically do the same thing. Make sure that the rubber's overlapped. Make sure that the rubber is flat inside the tire. Alright, so now we got two layers of rubber pretty much going around the whole inside of the tire. Man, I bet you the mosquitoes would love this. Yeah, they'd love that, wouldn't they? <laughs> Alright, so here's our tire. As you can see here, we have our two inner tubes there. It's overlapping. Now, as you ride and think, when your tire's filled up and there's glass and stuff coming, glass has to go through the outer part of your tire, so that means you gotta go through the tread. Now it's got to go through two extra layers of rubber before it can puncture your good inner tube, which is over there. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, there we go. That right there is what's going to be going on top of this right here. So you think, now all the glass and stuff has to go through all this before it can pop that over there. All right, now I'm going to get the other tube over here. 
do the same thing as before. See, if I had 26 inch tubes, I wouldn't have to cut them in half like that, but since I only got like 18 inch tubes and 20 inch tubes, uh, that's what I'm going to have to do. Alright, so now we got our third layer of rubber here. Let me put this knife away before I cut myself again. Alright, now we got our third layer of rubber. Same as before, right where we left off. You want to make sure that you got a couple extra layers here. Just overlap it a little bit and make sure that the rubber's flat. I'm sure you know what to do by now. Uh, I'm going to stick this in the tire and make sure everything's flat here. Now the hard part is going to be getting the tire back on the rim. But I'll get to that in a couple minutes. I'll show you how to do all that. So let me first uh, get the rubber inside the tire here. Once we get the rubber in, it'll be a little easier. Alright, so right here's our tire. Uh, the rubber's sticking out a little bit right now for now. It's okay. You're probably, if you're cutting up smaller inner tubes, you're probably going to have the same thing I'm doing. Let me grab the wrench. I don't want to lose this wrench. Over that, over there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the good inner tube now on top of all this rubber. So let me put the camera down. I'll put you over here. So you can see. Now what i got to do is i got to get this tube now inside the tire and I gotta make sure it doesn't crimp so you wanna make sure you got a little bit of air don't put a lot of air just make sure you got a little bit of air in your tube that way you know it's not gonna bubble you don't want any crimps now all you do is simply push the tube on top of the tubes we just put in and I'm gonna put you down here so you can see a little closer Now. This is going to be a little, you know, a little challenge to fit all these tubes in at once. But once you get it in, you know, once you get all the liners and stuff inside the tire, they'll stay in pretty nice. But you don't want to fill up the tube all the way until you know that there's no crimps. All right, sometimes this, this is basically the hardest part here, getting all this inside the tire with no bubbles. Because a lot of times, let me let more air out of the tube. A lot of times it doesn't really want to go all the way in, you know. Could use glue if you wanted to, but I don't have any with me. And the leaves, the leaves are not helping. Let me move these leaves out of the way. Alright. Bear with me here a minute. Just bear with me here, I'm trying. I'm going to make sure this gets done right. And whenever you do this, you know, you're probably going to have to deal with the same circumstances. These tubes are not going to want to stay in the tire, which is normal, but you know, just bear with it. Push them in. Make sure that they're all in tight. And you want to make sure that the rubber is flat. I hope you can see this clearly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera here. Maybe you'll be able to see a little better there. Now sometimes this part right here can take you 10 minutes. It might take you 10 minutes to get all this inside the tire. Just to 
you know, because it's not going to want to go in at first. But once you get it in, it'll stay in, and you should be good for the road. You should be good for the road once you get it in. You just got to bear with it and make sure that the tube doesn't crimp. The tube, as you see, likes to crimp. Once it gets settled in the tire, it'll be all right, but got to get it settled in first. I could pause the video here, but I want you to see everything I'm doing because you're probably going to have to go through the same circumstances. When it comes to this part, you're probably going to have the same circumstances where the tube, you know, where the one part here wants to crimp. Now you just got to keep flattening it out and keep pushing it into the tire until, you know, until it finally slides in place. Sometimes if you hold it in, like over here, you hold one end, you crush it in, and you hold that in, make sure it's in tight. Bunch of different ways you can do it, but... Alright, so now all the tubes are inside the tire, but we got these little kinks here. You see this? You're probably going to get this too. Alright, this is okay. Just, you know, you keep crushing it in. You got to make sure the rubber settles. Once the rubber settles, these kinks will go away. But whenever you get those kinks, all that means is that you just got to settle the rubber. You, know, you just got to keep pushing the tube in the tire and settle it. And once the rubber settles, all those kinks there will go away. See, they're starting to go away now. You know, when you slide it down, And once you get it on the rim, it should be a lot easier. And I'm going to set the camera back over there so you can see from a little bit of a distance. Another thing, make sure there's no dirt or anything sharp inside the tire. Because that alone will give you a flat. Now, once we got that in and let out the little bit of air that's in there, let out whatever air is in your tire, and then just finish crushing the tube in and then get ready to put it on the rim. Make sure everything's set. And you notice the tube is still a little crimped, which is why you don't want to fill it all the way up with air just yet. You want to put it on the rim, and then once it's on the rim, you want to squeeze the tire and make sure that all the rubber settles right. Because after a while, the rubber, it'll all settle in place. But you want to fill it with probably about halfway. Take it for a test run. You know, make sure the tire's low when you give it a test run. Make sure that the tire doesn't have a lot of air, and then that'll settle all the liners and stuff. Everything will kind of slip into place. And then after you do that, you'll be all set. It's just a matter of getting it all into the tire and then back onto the rim. Now, this might take you a little longer, or it might not take you long at all. You never know. But as long as you do the job right, it don't really matter how long it takes you. As long as the job gets done right, and you don't get no more flat tires, you know what I mean? As long as everything goes smooth.
All right, so I got the tire on the rim. Uh, it took a little, uh, it took a little longer than I expected. So um, I let the camera cut off while I did that. However, once you get to this step, you don't want to fill up your tire all the way. Not yet. And what you do is you fill it up about halfway. Fill up the tire about halfway in case if the tube is starting to crimp inside because you, you know you can't see inside right now. You don't know what it's doing. And as you're riding down the road, you don't want it to pop. So what you do is just put a little air in at a time and make sure the rubber is settled. All right, now, you don't want to fill it up all the way just yet. Get a little bit of air. All right. Now look, what you want to do is you want to push down on the tire. So any kinks or anything, any kinks in the tube, are going to come out. You know what I mean? It's going to, the pressure is going to release any kind of bubbles, anything inside that might be out of place. Squeeze the tire, bang it, do whatever you got to do just to make sure that everything inside is settled properly and just to make sure that everything inside if you feel any bubbles in your tire, what you got to do is you got to squeeze them. And I would let some air out and push down on the tire, just like to, you know, so the rubber inside, uh, you know, so everything smooths out and flattens and settles. Because if it's not settled and you ride down the road and you got a knot in your tire, inside it could pop, you know. It could take you a hundred miles or it could take you a hundred feet. But if you have a knot inside your tire, uh, that's not a good thing. Make sure that um, no knots. And as long as you got no knots, you're good, man. You're good as long as there's no no bubbles or nothing. So right now, I think we're pretty much set. Lord willing, this don't pop as I'm riding. If it does, I'll let you know. <laughs> but uh, at least you don't need any glue with this method. My last method, it worked. All right, the camera actually fell off of the log that time. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I'm almost done here. Uh, I hope I'm not boring you guys to death. I just want to show you step by step how I do this. I just wanted to, uh, you know, show you guys step by step um, how to flat proof your bike and how to beat the corporations, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, finish what I'm doing here, and hopefully you guys can learn something. I'm going to finish pumping up the tire, make sure there's no knots, and then we should be all set to go. Alright, I'm going to finish uh, pumping up this tire. She seems to be holding pretty good. Lord willing, everything goes smooth. But as of now... Uh, I don't see any problems. I don't feel any bubbles in the tube. So I'm going to pump this up all the way. And I'm going to put the tire back on the bike. By the way, my dad hooked me up with this air pump. It's a decent air pump. It's better than the last one I had. We were at the flea market. We got a lot of good stuff the other day. Yeah, see, I can hear, I can hear something in here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to take the stem off. Alright, the reason why I stopped filling it with air, it's, as you see, it's not completely full yet. Uh, when I was putting air inside of the tire, I heard it go... I don't know if it was just settling or if that was a bubble. See, I don't want any bubbles, because right now, this is the only good inner tube I have with me. And 
I don't want to have any bubbles. So look, this is what I'm going to do. If you're out in the woods or wherever you are, do the same thing I'm about to do. Look, take your bike tire and bounce it on the ground. Because the shock, the shock will actually loosen up any bubbles, anything that's not right, the shock will actually make the tube settle. All right, I'm going to finish putting air inside of the tire. I got to get this done soon. I got to get this done soon because uh, my pills are starting to hit me and I don't want to break anything. So uh, if I make any mistakes, let me know. Alright, now I'm going to leave this front tire a little soft, just for the time being. Right now, there's probably roughly about 10 pounds air, I'd say. I went and put more than that before you take it for a test run. You want to make sure that your tube settles. So, uh, I got about roughly 10 pounds of air, and I'm going to put this on the bike now, and then I'm going to take it for a ride. I'm going to ride it for about a mile or two, and then I'll fill it with however much more air it needs. Now, if you have a directional tire, make sure you put it on the wrong way, because if your tire's on the wrong direction, it'll slow you down. This one, this is a directional tire. All right, it goes a certain way. I gotta figure this one out. Uh, the bike's moving that way. It's upside down. Um, All right, I'm starting to run out of tape here on my camera. But before I do run out of tape, let me point something out to you. See that little arrow right there? I don't know how good you can see it on the camera. Let me uh, focus it. There we go. That's a clear image. Look at that. It says drive. And then there's an arrow pointing that way. So that means your tire is a directional tire. Okay. There. Okay. Um, I got the tire back on the bike here tires back on the bike as you can see and I didn't I didn't fill it all the way with air because I'm not really sure if there's any bubbles or anything I don't think you should fill yours with air all the way either I'm gonna take this for a spin with the tire low that way I know the tube is gonna settle and everything's gonna settle and after that settles then I'll pump it up and make the tire very firm all right so here I am riding the bike front tire don't have it's not full of air but there's enough air to where I can ride and I think you should take your bike for about take it for about a mile just to make sure that the liners and the tube are settled and after that everything should be good all right feel free to write me a message or write a comment I'm always around I'm gonna hit the road here all right guys peace